Hello class, nice to see everyone today. I know a few of you emailed me earlier this week to let me know you had some trouble with finding the slope of a line, so I decided to call this session so we can go over a few examples. Yeah, I'm, I'm having trouble finding the slope, and, and I'm just not sure I understand the underlying concept, so I need your help. All right, um, could anyone tell me what you know about slope so far from what you've learned in the online lessons? Well, I know it's a slant, and I know that there is a formula, but I don't understand it. Okay, well, you're off to a good start. What we're trying to determine with slope is we're trying to determine the slant of the line, in other words, how it's changing over time, and we can do that a couple of ways. And you mentioned one, the formula, and the other is by observation, but we can only use that when we have a line with what we call readily identifiable points, that is, if we know exactly where those points lie. Um, yes, Emily, you can also count the distance between the points, and what we can do is we can put those into a fraction. Uh, we can put the difference in y in the numerator and the difference in x in the denominator, and this is called the rise over the run, which is the slope or the slant. Now, in this first example, you can see that this would be a good line to count the rise over the run because it falls on two distinct points. Uh, it's not halfway or anything. So if we draw a triangle connecting these two points, this is going to help us count the rise over the run. And first we're going to count the points up and down, and then we're going to count the points across. Okay, so would that be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 down, and 1, 2, 3, 4 over? Is that right? You've got it, Brian. That's it. So we put it in our fraction, 6 over 4, and actually we're going to reduce this by a factor of 2. So this is going to be m equal to 3 over 2. Now notice that the letter m always represents the slope, so you're going to see that a lot in your lessons. Now did you also notice that the slope is slanting down from left to right? Give me a happy face if you saw that. Good. Now this one happens to be negative, so we're going to add a negative sign to our fraction and um, to show that the line is slanting downward from left to right, so be aware of that. And yes, Roger, you always reduce it. Um, Cecily, no, they're not all negative. Let's take a look at the next slide and you'll see here. Um, in this next slide, you see that if the line is slanting upward from left to right, it's going to be positive. So I want you to remember a car going uphill like this, and this is going to be a positive slope. And then if it's slanting downward from left to right, I picture a car going downhill, it's going to be negative, so that's a negative slope. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, yeah, that's definitely much better. I see how to do it now. Okay, great. We're going to play a game now to make sure everyone understands, and you know this game. It's called Who Wants to Be a Bazillionaire? We played this all semester, so you know. Okay, the directions for this game will be to find the slope in lowest terms, but with also the correct sign like we talked about. Okay, when we last left off in class, we are at the $500,000 question, so we're going to start there. Okay, ready? Find the slope of this line, and make sure you raise your hand when you know the answer. Okay, Brian, what do you think? Is it C4 over 5? Mm, is that your final answer? Uh, uh, is it, no, is it negative? I'm going to say negative 4 over 5. I'm going to say D is my final answer. Okay, yes, fantastic. Um, remember that when it's landing downward from left to right, we've got to put that negative sign in there. So D is the final answer. And I think we're going to use our lifeline to ask the audience on that one. Agreed? <laughs> okay. Now, for the last question for the bazillion dollars, I want you to find the slope of the next line, but this time I didn't mark the point. So you're going to have to figure that out as well. Okay, Emily, what do you think? I think it's negative 2 since you have to reduce it from negative 4 over 2. Yes, you've got it. Give her a hand. Now, she remembered that she had to reduce it 
plus, add that negative sign in there. Fantastic. Okay, that wraps up our game. Um, why don't we do this? Why don't we have everyone complete Lesson 5-4 today? Then email me and let me know how you did, and we can meet later on this week if you're still having trouble. Is that agreeable? Okay, wonderful. So that concludes our session for today, and we'll catch everyone online. Take care.